Hello, and welcome to my channel called Statistics from A to Z, Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name, which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos, please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. This is the fifth of six videos in a playlist on ANOVA and related concepts. There are four videos on ANOVA only, and this fifth video compares ANOVA with regression. The sixth video is about a related statistical analysis called ANOM, the analysis of means, means which can do something that ANOVA cannot. ANOVA and regression have a number of similarities. They both focus on variation, and they both use sums of squares in doing so. In fact, some authorities say they're just different sides of the same coin, but that's not intuitively obvious since there are a number of basic differences. The purpose of this video is to give you a more intuitive understanding of both ANOVA and regression by exploring both their similarities and their differences. In almost all the other videos, we go through four or five keys to understanding, which tell you on one page the key points about the concept. Here we don't have four or five key points. We have 12 comparisons in this compare and contrast table. We'll provide detailed explanations of each of these line items. Let's start with some key differences. ANOVA and regression differ in their purposes and in the type of question they answer. ANOVA is actually more similar to the t-test than to regression. ANOVA and the two sample t-tests do the same thing if there are only two populations. They determine whether there is a statistically significant difference between the means of the two populations. ANOVA can also do this for three or more populations. For example, is there a statistically significant difference among the mean effects of drugs A, B, and C? The answer to the question is yes or no. Regression. The purpose of regression is very different. It attempts to produce a model in the form of a, reg a form, form of a formula for a regression line or curve, which can be used to predict the values of the y dependent variable given values of one or more x independent variables. Regression goes beyond mere correlation to attempt to establish a cause and effect relationship between the x variables and the values of y. The answer to the question is the formula for the best fit regression line or curve. For example, house price equals $200,000 plus the number of bedrooms times $50,000. In ANOVA, the independent variables axis must be categorical, otherwise known as nominal. That is, the different values of x in the category, for example, drug, must be names, for example, drug A, drug B, and drug C, rather than numbers. The dependent variable Y must be numerical, for example, a blood pressure measurement like 141, 119, or 127. In regression, both the independent variable X and the dependent variable Y must be numerical. For example, X is the number of bedrooms and Y is the house price. As I mentioned earlier, regression attempts to establish a cause and effect relationship. For example, uh, that, that the increasing the number of bedrooms results in an increase in the house price. Groups are sets of data, like populations or samples. Regression really doesn't compare groups as such, but if one wants to explore this similarity between regression and ANOVA, one might describe regression concepts in terms used by ANOVA. In the regression example below, the sample of paired XY data comprises group 1, and group 2 consists of the corresponding XY points on the regression line. By corresponding, we mean they have the same X values as those in group 1. So the formula for the regression line is, in this example is Y equals 2X. So for each value of x in group 1, we calculate the value of y using y equals 2x. The main conceptual similarity between ANOVA and regression is that they both analyze variation, as measured by sums of squares, 
to come to their conclusions. For both ANOVA and regression, the total variation is partitioned into two components. How they do that is very different, as we'll show later. Both ANOVA and regression use variation as a tool. But variation is not any one thing. The kinds of variation analyzed by ANOVA and by regression are quite different. That is because the types of questions they attempt to answer are very different. For example, we know that variables x and y can vary. That is, all their values in a sample will not be identical. A sample will not be something like the values 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3. The first question for regression is, do x and y vary together? either increasing together or moving in opposite directions. That is, is there a correlation between the x and y variables? If there is not a correlation, as demonstrated by a scatter plot and the cor correlation coefficient r, then we will not even consider doing a regression analysis. For ANOVA, there is no question of varying together because the values of the x variable, being a categorical variable, are names like drug A, drug B, and drug C. It is meaningless to talk about names increasing or decreasing, so there can be no correlation calculated between X and Y in ANOVA. For both ANOVA and regression, the total variation is called the sum of squares total, or SST. Since ANOVA and regression measure very different types of variation, one would expect that the components of their total variations are very different and they are. For ANOVA, SST equals SSW plus SSB, where SST is the sum of squares total, SSW is the sum of squares within, and SSB is the sum of squares between. For regression, SST equals SSR plus SSE, where SST is the sum of squares total, SSR is the sum of squares regression, and SSE is the sum of squares error. Let's first look at ANOVA and SSW and SSB. This diagram illustrates conceptually the variation of SSW and SSB, which are the two components of SST for ANOVA. Each group has some variation within its set of data. That is called the sum of squares within. The SSWs are conceptually pictured here as the widths of the bell-shaped curves. Sum of squares between is the total of all the variations between the individual group means in the overall mean of all the data from all the groups. All of this is described in more detail in the ANOVA Part 2 article in the book and in that video. For regression, sums of squares regression and sum of squares error are the components of the sum of squares total. With ANOVA, we use the data to calculate SSW and SSB, which are the two components of the sums of squares total SST. Then we total them to get SST. With regression, we use the data to calculate only one of the two components, the sum of squares error, SSE. And we also use the data to calculate the sum of squares total, SST. And then finally, the second component, SSR, which is the sum of squares regression, is calculated as SST minus SSE. Sum of squares error, SSE, is the sum of the squared deviations of the data values of the variable Y to the regression line or curve. In this very simple example, there are only three data points in our sample. These are illustrated by the three black dots. Reading from the top down, the data points have x, y values of x equals 2 and y equals 6, then x equals 1 and y equals 2, and finally x equals 0 and y equals 1. This regression line is defined by the formula y equals 3x. There is no error for the point at the top 2x, 2 um, and 6. It is on the regression line of y equals 3x. The black dots of the other two points, 1, 2, and 0, 1, are each one unit away from the regression line. So their error is 1, and their squared error is also 1. And the sum of these squared errors, SSE, is 
0 plus 1 plus 1, which equals 2. The sum of squares total, SST, is the sum of the squared deviations of the data values of the variable y to the mean of y. As shown as black dots in the vertical graph on the left, our three data points had y values of 1, 2, and 6. Uh, these values are also shown in the first column of the table in the middle. 1 plus 2 plus 6 equals 9, divided by 3 that gives us a mean value of 3 for the y variable, as stated in the top row of the table. The middle column of the table calculates the three deviations from this mean, negative 2, negative 1, and 3. And the right column of the table shows, shows the squared deviations of 4, 1, and 9. This is also illustrated in the diagram to the right of the table. The sum of the squared deviations is 4 plus 1 plus 9 equals 14. This is SST, the sum of squares total. The sum of squares regression, SSR, equals SST minus SSE. Sum of squares total SST is the total variation in the variable y from its mean. Sum of squares error is that part of the total variation which is not modeled by the regression line or curve. SST and SSE, as we have said, are calculated from the data as shown on the previous slides. Sum of squares regression SSR is that part of the variation in y which is modeled by the regression line or curve. By definition, we know that SST equals SSE plus SSR, so we calculate SSR from SST and SSE. SSR equals SST minus SSE. For both ANOVA and regression, a ratio of the two sums of squares provides the conclusion for the analysis. Let's talk about ANOVA first. Again, the part two article and video have more details. If we divide SSB by its degrees of freedom, we get MSB, the mean sum of squares between. Likewise for SSW and MSW. Now the formulas for MSB and MSW are similar to the formula for variance. So both MS B and MSW are a type of variance. And what do we get if we divide two variances? We get a value for the test statistic F. So we can do an F test with this information. If F is greater than or equal to F critical, then there is a stati statistically significant difference among the groups being tested. For regression, the key sum of squares ratio is sum of squares regression, SSR, divided by the sum of squares total, SST. SSR is the component of the total variation, SST, which is explained by the regression line. The ratio of SSR to SST is called R squared, which is a measure of the goodness of fit of the regression line. Values of R squared range from 0 to 1, with higher values indicating a better fit. There is a predetermined clip level for the value of R squares. R squared. It varies by discipline. For example, engineers can be more rigorous than social scientists. If R squared is greater than this clip level, then the regression model is considered good enough and its predictions can then be subjected to validation via designed experiments. Spreadsheets and statistical software often include an ANOVA table in their outputs for both ANOVA and regression. Here is an example. One of the most significant differences between ANOVA and regression is in how they are used. ANOVA has a wide variety of uses. It is well suited for design experiments in which levels of the X variable can be controlled. For example, testing the effects of specific dosages of drugs. Regression can be used to draw conclusions about a population based on sample data. This is inferential statistics. The purpose of regression is to provide a cause and effect model, a formula for a best fit regression line or curve, which predicts a value for the y variable from a value of x variables. Subsequent to that, data can be collected in designed experiments to prove or to disprove the validity of the model.
Okay, that's it for our clarification of this confusing concept. If you like this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me that more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsfromatoz.com has a listing of available and planned videos. Now, videos like this one can be very helpful, but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. I'd recommend following my blog at statisticsfromatoz.com slash blog. I've got some things there that hopefully you will find interesting, like a statistics tip of the week series, as well as posts showing that you are not alone if you're confused by statistics. I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and on Twitter as at Stats A to Z.